This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, this is, of course, The Ramble, and it goes on until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time, and uh, looky, 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 who, uh, sit straight up, would you? Wait a minute, you've got to, well, i got to do something to you there. Uh, hold on a second, got to do something with your picture here to make you, you're, you're a little too low. No, 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 hold on a second, I can do it uh, from here, believe it or not. Configure video, and then I go tilt, and I go tilt upwards. There, there we, we go. Ah, you see? Now I got you there. Okay, got you perfect. See, the trouble is I have too much work I have to do here to well, be able to be able. Sir, wait a minute. You're director. You're the yeah. talent. Yeah, I'm. I'm and the I'm talent. the guest. And and you're the guest. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. It's Friday. It's Friday. I don't know why your your camera's the same camera mine is, but it's bluer. I have to I have to go in there and change the settings so that we but I, I can do the whole split screen. So that we're the same. I can do the split screen thing Hi. now. You know, here we are. Okay. Anyway, so Oh man. It's hot. I'm feeling crappy. I I have had the air conditioning on for an hour now. I know, but it's just not only in here. I mean, the rest of the apartment. Yeah, well, I'm 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 back having some of my <laughs> crap physically. Here we go again. The, the a whole fullness in the chest and the. the Where's the lead-in music? The, what? For your ailments. I don't have ailment m- music. Well, I think we should get it. Why? Because it's a big section of your evening. Program. And my tooth is getting better. Oh, here we go and, again. Uh, oh, and I have a thing. I have Help. a thing. Anybody Help. ever heard of this one? This, this is the disease du jour for me now. What? Yeah. Uh, you're going to love this. Uh, what is that in the middle of the screen there? Pause, unmute, show. Uh, or just move. Uh, I don't know. She's she's watching the show on, on another machine, and it's... Yeah. Anyway, uh, I've got this thing in my ear that every now and then it almost sounds like a motor revving up. And then it goes away. I'm not kidding you. Now tell me that isn't the strangest ailment I've ever had. Help. Help me, please. Tell me that isn't. I need Mm -hmm. help here. Somebody relieve me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway. I'm too tired to do a show tonight. For some reason, I'm. It's I'm Friday. Beat. It's Friday. You know Friday. what it is? I think we got the flu shot, and I think the flu shot kind of knocks you out a little. Bit. Well, not me, but you're very susceptible to medicine and things. We did get the flu shot, and we got the double whammy that they give for seniors. Yeah, they give you a senior <laughs> double whammy <laughs> flu shot, so that you know, because we old people, we get the flu, we die. <laughs> You know. yeah, there is no alternative with us. <laughs> it does not make me feel good. But anyway, listen, I got a little something I want to play here, uh, a, a little music here, uh, and uh, it's we always. I should I should get the video in here so that I could actually play the video is I this made. The Pat of this. Robertson? No, no, this is. Who died? Died. Those are people who died, died. Those are people who died, died. Those are people who died, died. They were my friends. And they died. died. Yeah, it's Jim Carroll. We played that by accident last night. Uh, I Later. like it. So who died today? It's, somebody died today. Let me show you folks who the, the, a picture of the person who died. You won't be able to see it because you've just got rid of your screen. Well, can there. I roll down to you see it? You can see it over down okay. here. Okay, if you look closely. I'm looking. It'll be a little bit before you see well, it. Well, I could put you back up here. It, yeah, well, it's not going to come on screen for a couple of minutes, for about okay, 30 so seconds or it'll so. It's going to take me a while to get it. It's going to take you a while. Well, everybody knows exactly who that is. Got to know who that is. Okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay? That's uh, Harry. He died? Yes, he died. Oh, my favorite guy. How old was he? 91. 
Are you serious? 91. That's Harry Dean Stanton. I love young. Harry Dean Stanton. Oh, my God. And I knew, so I knew Harry Dean Stanton. Did you? Well, he came to San Francisco. Who brought him by? Somebody I knew knew Harry Dean Stanton, and Stanton was in town, and so they were hanging out together because Stanton never, well, he had a little problem. He never liked to drink alone. And he liked to drink all the time. He looks like a drinker. He, he liked to drink all the time. So he would like take people. Drinking. Well, he would say, you want to come drinking with me? And then he would take you out and just get you plowed. He wasn't happy unless you were drinking as much as he was drinking. So he was a big time. He was a big time. Uh, wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, but he's gone. He uh, uh, he was great. A lot of films, a lot he, of films over his career, and mostly in a lot of which were Colts films. What's his name that did? Well, he was in tw he was in Twin Peaks. Well, what's his he name? Was, the, what? the director. Uh, uh, Lynch. Lynch. He, he was in a lot he, of Lynches. Yeah. yeah, he did a lot of David Lynch films, and, but he also did uh, he did lots of stuff. I mean, the guy was uh, was a phenomenal. Uh, talent and of course we saw him last uh, on HBO in in that love big love show where he, oh, right you right, know right, right. and uh, there was some other show recently he recently had a film called Paris Texas which he got known he for. was great in that and he was yeah. also in the one that Lynch did with yeah. um, I kind of like to think of him as the um, uh, what do you call it version the the uh, um, very acting ed version of um, oh god my, my I'm just out of it tonight uh, uh, who's the who's a country singer Willie Nelson he kind of reminds me of the acting Willie Nelson you know well, he looks because Willie dead. Willie Nelson looks like an old tree Willie you know Nelson and, looks and, dead. and he looked like an old tree yeah look at that face but, yeah look at that face yeah what wow. a face what a face you know <laughs> that's the face of a uh, that's, that's a, sad he was one of my favorites that's the face of a star he was so edgy yeah he played all these just edgy yeah. kind of roles yeah, they were edgy the right. twisted they just, were edgy yeah Anyway, you're going to China. I'm going to Hong Kong, yes, Hong on Kong Sunday. On Sunday. Sunday morning. It, 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 you know, I don't know why you don't spend more time over there at one, as long as you're there. I mean, the trip is what? 16 hours each way. Which, by the way, goes by faster than you think it would. Well, what they do, which is very clever, you get in and they shut down all the windows. So immediately at 10 in the morning, it's 10 at night. So it's dark the whole time. So they serve you in semi-darkness, but those things do not go up for another 16 hours. So it's dark. People put on their slippers, a little neck thing, and, and just go well, into you probably sleep. What you probably should do here is uh, try to go to bed late so you don't get a lot of sleep, so you're real tired when you get on the plane. I'll be tired because I don't sleep late. I, I, I go to sleep when I go to sleep, but I don't stay asleep. That's my problem. Yeah, well, tell them the stuff, though, that you that you take with you to pass the time away. She doesn't want to make sure, she, she wants to make sure she's not bored on the plane. Well, I have a couple of things. First of all, I have a backup, um, backup to my, for my iPad. We have a Mophie power Power service. thing for my backup. And then I have, how many movies? About I, 20? I, I think I may have put 20, 30 movies on there. 30 it's movies a, on a little, on, on, on a the little, little Sam's, on a little, little disc. The sand disc. Uh, it's so cute. Portable Wi-Fi. Portable Wi-Fi. It creates Wi-Fi. Wi doesn't have to be plugged in. It just has to sit next to the iPad. Wait a minute. How are they going to like? Do they? They don't mind that on the airplane that you're turning on a Wi-Fi device? No, it's 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 you're turning off the air. You've got airplane off on rather. Yeah, and so, you can still get the Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just geared into that machine. Yeah, but it's still a Wi-Fi signal that's going out into the Who plane. Who knows? I've used it on every trip, so there. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to complain. So Just, how many movies did you watch last time? A big well, chunk well, of yeah, how, uh, That's a stupid question to ask because you, you watch movies all the time. I love movies. Gee, I don't, I'm, I don't sound sick, do I? I sound pretty peppy today. I think you're sick in the head. Yeah, I. Um, uh, what was we were watching a Woody Allen movie and they did start terrible. doing a thing. Yeah, but the uh, Hollywood uh, happy ending. And uh, there's this one scene with her, him and his ex-wife, in about his hypochondria, and that he invented diseases that you know, imagined diseases that didn't even exist. Sounds like my husband. 
like uh, he thought he had Dutch elm blight disease, which <laughs> only affects trees. But the reason I, I kind of smirked at that is because when I was a kid, there was somebody who used to write notes, like from his mother, saying why he didn't show up yesterday because he was sick. And one of me wrote, he said, my son had Dutch elm blight disease. Was it written in a child's yeah, handwriting? Yeah, but, but it's Dutch elm blight disease. <laughs> So it is a disease. You know. So there you go. Hey, well, look, you know, you know, it's gonna, you know what I want on my tombstone. I told you so. I told you I was sick. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just tired. I think maybe, maybe I should maybe stop doing this for like a month or two. Yeah, then maybe you need a little rest. <laughs> now, if you had come with me to Hong Kong or China, I, I could be sick stayed. there. I would have stayed. But for me to, where would I go? You know, it's not like I'm in mainland China where I could go. Well, maybe I'll go with you next year, even if I don't I'll have any money. I'll go to Barcelona okay. in the spring. If we don't do it now, we'll never do it. Well, yeah. And well, I want to drive to that little place with the free tapas. What do you mean with the free tapas? Oh, you mean down in... Um, yeah, the southern was, part. That guy, what's his name? I can't remember his name now. Goes around the world eating. The chef. Eating. Uh, uh, he's on CNN. I'm trying yeah. to remember his name. Anyway. I can't remember names tonight. Anyway. Uh, I remember the name yesterday when I was interviewing, uh, uh, no, when I was talking here on the show about uh, Carroll, Jim Carroll. And I said he was a young poet when he first came on my show in New York, and he was brought by this other poet, John Giorno. And I'm going, how come I can't remember who this guy is on CNN, but I can remember the name John G. Orner. Because it's your short-term memory that goes first. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. That's why, like, old people, they can remember way back when, when they were But small. anyway, he went, to, he went to this place in southern Spain, and I'm trying to remember which one it was. I'll have to go back and look at we're it. We're going. In which, no, you, it's not like you get free tapas. Here's what happens. You get the drink. You, every time you buy a drink, drink they you, bring they bring a tapas. Right, and the tapas is free. And the tapas is free. Yeah. So you have to drink beer after, and me, what, I can't. I just pay, <laughs> you know. But no, the tapas is free, and there's some extraordinary. And tapas. it's a real old city that we're going to drive down to. And I think it'll be fun. Yeah, but I'm tr we don't know what the city is anymore. We'll find it. I, you know, I'm afraid of driving now. Like, do you think you are? I don't know <laughs> if I remember how to drive. The last time when I went up to my storage with Carlos was a year ago last summer, it was summer of 2016, when he finally said to me, I'm not driving you up here anymore, this is it, okay? And I had to follow I'm, I'm him. I'm still a pretty good driver, right? I had to follow him in a car, and I'm driving like this real slow, because I hadn't driven in six years. Oh, you're like that little old lady with her head, eyes above the... Yeah, the, yeah that's uh, me. No, but the last time I drive, I drove okay, didn't I? Uh-huh. Am I boring you? No. Last time you drove was when we drove back from Vermont. Vermont, yeah. Yeah, but now I'm, I'm thinking... And we drove that, in California when we got I married. If I drive in Europe, will I be as good be a driver fine. as I was? You'll be fine. You'll be know. fine. But, um, yeah. It's 1018. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out there. You can hardly wait to get out of here. <laughs> If Anne Franklin is listening, this is for you, my dear. Hi. I told the story last night about her. What, my old friend? Yeah, but I can't talk about it now. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, I, I was mentioning something about uh, prison. Well, the, the, she was she had been in prison, and that she got married. And I asked her how it was marriage, and she said, uh, "Well, it's okay." She wasn't like excited, and I was thinking of saying to her, "Well, you know." Marriage is just another form of prison. <laughs> <laughs> it has some of the same things, except somebody somebody said to me when I said that on the air last night that, that the only difference is what you wear. <laughs> you know? uh, but uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it was nice. It was a good thing. She yeah. she was a nice lady. I like her. Me so, too. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> boy, I am. Uh, I said, I'm still, I'm, it's like I, the thing that went away is kind of coming back. You, you just uh, are not happy with me, are you? <laughs> this has not been a marriage you, pay, you signed up for, right? That's true. <laughs> you thought it was all going to be happiness and 
travel wax and have lips. fun and wax well, lips. You know, last and last night uh, Schmoody called. She may call tonight. Oh God! It, no, you know, oh God. <laughs> she she called last night, and we reminisced about all the things that we used to do that we considered fun, like creating road rage in other people. Mm -hmm. Sure, glad I didn't listen to and, that one. And the holding farting contests. Mm, lovely. <laughs> You haven't changed. Huh? You haven't changed. I, do I? F you know, you fart worse than I, you haven't farted yeah, in a while. Hey, you haven't farted in a while. Because I had surgery. No, but you 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 were farting. Well, in the beginning. And, and it was putrid. Well, because of uh, because of the surgery. Can I you had imagine? Look, look into the camera. Look into the camera. Can you imagine a putrid <laughs> fart coming out of this person? <laughs> Stop it. But my farts, you never smell because they're quiet. Yeah, the silent but, but deadly ones. They're not, they're not yeah, deadly. they're pretty they're deadly. deadly. No, you were snoring last night, by the way. Did you hear me? Like, yeah, I don't snore that much you, anymore. No, you don't at all. Since I lost all this weight, and I've I've kept losing weight, so now I'm trying to gain no, a little don't, bit you're back perfect. on. Perfect, you're fine. Well, that's fine, but I just want to know that I can gain it if I want to. Oh man, I've been. No, also I've been belching a lot. I don't know what that's about. Hmm? Uh, help me, help yeah. me. Please anyway, help me. so uh, let's see here. He's dead. Yeah, he was, um, I liked him. My old producer is dead. Who else died this week? One other person died this week. Oh yeah, uh, Frank Vincent. Oh right, right you know right, right, from right. the uh, from the Sopranos and, and, uh, and Goodfellas. Goodfellas and Casino. Yeah. Yeah. You know what happens, folks, and I think you'll you'll attest to this as you keep going on in life. Uh, uh, People start, a lot of people start dying. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're like 16 years old, not many people you know die. And if, if somebody does die, it's a freak accident. You go, Frank who? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, you make a, a big deal about, you know, you don't know people who die. And my mother once said that as you get older, uh, when you're younger, your biggest uh, social thing that you do is go to uh, weddings uh, uh, no go to birthday parties and when you're old it's funerals mm. that's the social occasion that's the occasion and I knew that that my mother was getting really old when she was 88 years old and a friend of hers died at 92 and she said to me how could she go she was so young I'm not kidding well you. it's all from your perspective of where you're looking at life you know and I went mom she was 92 years old you know, and uh, so we lost Harry Dean Stanton, uh, uh, ninety-one. Yeah. Wow! You who would have thought when I met Harry Dean Stanton, he looked like he would be dead in the next week. Oh, he's got that okay. face. He's got that. Yeah. that yeah. You're right. That. And um, he did the show with me. I remember. May have the tape here somewhere. Uh, in fact, I think I thought I had the tape, and then we didn't record on it or something. Anyway, and then uh, he he. He called me up at home and said, "Come on down and meet me at this bar." And I didn't talk. I talked to the guy who knew him, and he said, "Don't join him for drinks Personally, because you don't drink. It, it it will go on all night because number one, I don't drink, and he, I would literally have to with him. He like gets mad if you don't drink. Okay. So you didn't go down. So when I knew that Harry Dean Stanton, I said to myself, "This guy." is not going to live very long. 91! <laughs> Arthur lived to 94. Yeah, but the, qu the question you have to ask yourself is... What keeps him alive? What, what, yeah, why? Here was a guy who lived an unhealthy life, okay? And as I say, he looked like the acting version of Willie Nelson, who was another guy, by the way, that every other week there's a rumor he's dead. Yeah. And he has to, like, get on, still here. Uh, on the Internet and go, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still going strong. I'm still around. <laughs> but if you heard tomorrow that Willie Nelson, you, you thought he was dead once a couple of Did weeks I? ago. Yes. You said, did you hear? Harry Dean, uh, not, uh, uh, Willie Nelson is dead. No, it was somebody else. It was no, it was Willie, Willie Nelson. It was somebody else. Really? Yeah. And then we looked and he wasn't And, and they weren't dead. Yeah. Yeah. The internet is a great place, folks, to get information. Yes. <laughs> you know. Hmm. That's where the fake news is. So is, is there any, fake if, I, if I went to Hong Kong, is there anything to do in Hong Kong? Oh, yeah. First of all, it's surrounded by water and nice boat rides. It's great eating. It's a great eating country. Yeah. City. 
I don't know what you call it. It's part see, of China. It, it's it. Hong Kong is a. It's a city, but it's also like a territory. It's a something. That it's it's called something. It was like a territory or something. Well, like it was that. given back to China. In two what two uh, two thousand. And think. now what's happening is that Chinese government is getting involved in local, you know, elections. They're, they're trying to they're, clamp they're down. They're trying a to bit. clamp down. Where they where they didn't before because they knew this was the. It's the Hong beginning Kong, of, Kong, Hong Kong, of capitalism. Well, Hong there. Kong is their cash cow. Unbelievable. Yeah. And um, they didn't want to screw with it, but then there have been some demonstrations recently against uh, the way they, you know, they, the, the Chinese government, it's a strange relationship between the Chinese government and commerce now. Because the Chinese government once were pure communists, did not believe in capitalism, and now they're engaged in blatant capitalism. But they don't want it to grab hold on a political level. But it's getting there. So it's 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 a very strange because dance. So, but, that, but they that's also going have on. so much corruption and different levels in China. Well, it's so corrupt that most people think that the Tiananmen Square uprising was uh, over freedom, over democracy, and it wasn't. It was over the corruption that was going on. Like it, so many things that are made in China are made poorly. Um, my boss has four, four, four little girls. He was buying the diapers here in the United States and dragging it back to China. Really? Because whatever was used in the diapers and the disposable diapers was harmful. Yeah. And they had the same thing with the baby milk, remember? The, yeah, a lot of this may be part and parcel. They have no regulations or it's local and it's all abused. Well, this may be part and parcel of a, of a communist country. Um, uh, suddenly... Uh, having to deal with capitalism, and and realizing that yeah, you got to start controlling this kind of thing, you got to start controlling that kind of thing, and so they, they, it's been a hard hard curve for them. They had some hardcore future capitalists of China going to work when once they let it go, but the guys who run the country are still those old hardliners who don't know the first thing about this. Or young hardliners. I mean, they're not all old, old. Well, they're young. They, they were young hardliners. They're now older hardliners yeah, now, yeah, too. Yeah. The, Plus uh, the fact that, that the door is open to capitalism. They'll I, never go back. Yeah, but I've never been able to figure out why the Chinese government feels it is important to hold on to the communism. So threaten. You, you know, why they don't lighten up on it and just turn it into socialism. And I can't believe, and this is the one that just always gets me, that a communist country, which is essentially a more rigid form of socialism, okay, a communist country doesn't have single-payer health care. Go figure that one. There are only two countries in the world, civil, uh, highly commercial countries in the world, that don't have um, uh, single-payer health care. And one of them's us, and the other one's China. And us. But why China never got it? You would have thought the first thing they would have Well, they have were looking at, at, at models around the world, remember? Yeah, yeah. Have they solved it yet? Well, I don't know. We've, you've got a fairly good health plan. It just doesn't cover us very well. You know, so. But, uh, uh, like, in China, like, you have, like, Oxford here, right? As our carrier. Do they use Chinese insurance companies yeah. over there? I think out of Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, how much uh, is there a copay on on I on, have no on idea. acupuncture? I have no idea, but I'll find out. <laughs> is there a copay on I'll acupuncture? Find, I'll find out. They don't get sick over there because they're just going to stick needles in you. Mm. You know. It's uh, ten twenty eight. Just wanted to give you a yell. It's my wife. The time signal. Can I roll on over? Do you want to really roll I on over? I want to be near you, absolutely. Here, hold on a second. I will go as you slide. Roll I, 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 I will slide. Over. See how I did that, folks? Did you like that? Did you like what I did there? Huh? Huh? See, I can fade, and then I can, uh, I can do the slide as well. Anyway, come here. Come here. Come here, honey. Oh. Oh, here she is. Here she is. Oh, wait a minute. I got to get rid of this stuff up here. I didn't get ready. I wasn't prepared. I got to turn on the Skype. Here we go. Turning on the Skype. Turning on the Skype. Look at me. I'm turning I on the Skype. Brian's name. I don't know. I I don't know what that stuff is. I don't want to know. It's Skype garbage. 
Okay. But so. that's not Brian that calls you, is it? No, but that's I have nothing but on the on the on the front page here. People can see this. Wait, a minute, let me see if I can if I can do this. Uh, let me see here. Where are we? Panel, panel. Here, let me move the panel there up you here. Go. There, there it we is. go. Okay. If, look at this, folks. This is what we're talking about. See who who the hell is Brian S. Paskin, and why is he the only thing on my uh, on my on my page here? That's what I don't get. All right, doesn't make sense at all. I think he's a singer. What? He's a singer. No, he's not. That's a song. Those are songs he likes. Oh. And he's put them up there. Like, do we care? And how call, do call how, in? No, I've never heard from Brian S. Paskin. Call in our people. Call in uh, our people. Well, they'll call. Don't worry. We don't have Phil again tonight. It's another Phil free night. Nights. Two Phil free nights. Two tonight. Phil free nights. A great show last night. Phil, I didn't listen Without to it. Without Phil. Feel free to listen to it. Uh, and uh, Phil's uh, like doing the video at a wedding or fi filming a, a Oh, wedding. right, 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 yeah. Photo photographing a wedding or something. Anyway, so we're just waiting for our people to start calling. See, they're not calling. They don't want to talk to you. No one wants to talk to you. You know, uh, and I've got, I've got that audio open. I'm ready. Uh, I've got the lines open. I'm lines ready. Lines are open. Call in. You know, uh, and uh, we've got a lot of people watching, uh, and we've got a lot of people listening. But no one calling. But no one calling. Hey, you know what I could do? I could go to bed early tonight. Yeah, you yeah. could. Should we close down now? Yeah. Okay, we'll close down. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Jeff. He's come online. I can see who comes online Where's before they call. See down there? Right down there. Oh, Jeff. And there he is. Hey, there's he was, Jeff. He was, two nights in a row, two nights in a row, Jeff Stein hey, Jeff. was first on board. Hello, right. Jeff. Hi, Jeff. I'm getting here perfectly on time. Huh? Yeah, your color is good, too. Well, thank you. Which color? This color? All of it. Uh, yeah. Your face, the color, the, on the well, screen. I went sailing. Yeah, you, you went, oh, you went sailing. sailing. You look that is a lovely peach color shirt. Yeah. I, w I want one like that. You only like red. No, I will. I will do peach like that. Well, you have That's to wait till peach. you have to wait till next year's U.S. Open. Oh, well, you no, know, you don't have to do. It. You can just go buy me a T-shirt. I'll go down to. Uh, where did you get that one, uh, Jeff? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this. Yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> but no, no, it, it's uh, no him label. got it up enough so we can't no. see the label. No label. Yeah. It looks nice. Oh, so you didn't buy it? Somebody buy it for you? No, I'm not sure. I mean, who buys most of your clothes, you or your wife? Uh, it's usually we combine our effort. Like yeah. sometimes I say, well, we ought to buy some things because we're going on a trip and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So get some new things. And uh, today, today everything's on the internet. Yeah, sometimes they go to Costco. That's yeah, yeah. That, their, their stuff isn't bad. Okay, here Bob, comes here comes Rob Bob. Alfano. Hey, Rob. H hello, Rob. Are you there? Wait a minute. Got, there we go. There's Rob. Rob, when do you move into your new house? In, in next week. week from tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. How exciting. Yeah. 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 From tomorrow, finally. We got a bit of a problem. We we are. I have a. Uh, the uh, satellite guy coming on Tuesday, yeah. and I cannot find the satellite receivers anywhere. Because you know, I took him out of the old, the yeah. other house, and we're using the same receivers. He's putting a new dish on the roof, but we just ripped this. The place is a mess. We ripped it high and low, and cannot find the the receivers. I don't know what I'm going to do. Are they put in storage? Well, that's the, we're going to check the storage unit tomorrow. But everything is such a mess. That, they're in a box somewhere. Maybe you're going to have to buy some new receivers. They're expensive. I don't want to have to buy it. Well, I need another one anyway because we're doing a TV in the bedroom we didn't have. So I do need another one. You didn't have a TV set in the bedroom? No, I'm not a big TV in the bedroom kind of person. You I hear that? You hear that, dear? Let's get rid of the, be the, the TV in the bedroom. I think it becomes it becomes a hangout. Though. I don't want the bed to be a it hangout. It is a hangout. So. Yeah. Yeah, let's get let's get let's get rid of the TV set in the bedroom. You get rid of the TV set. In the oh boy, she. <laughs> I get rid of you. The, you, the you, only reason we have it in there is because we got it for two ninety nine. Otherwise, I wouldn't. She have. she starts watching stuff. Uh, we're not we don't have a picture on you, Mike. Uh, I know. I'm trying to work on it now. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 
Hold on. Yeah. Anyway, um, um, uh, she, she just goes in there and just starts watching one thing after another. And I finally have to go in another room to do anything uh, because I have no control over the TV set. The and bedroom. Point is, and my point is, I have no control over the TV set. Well, we have six televisions. Yes, but, so? but why do I have to be banished to another room? Why don't you go to one of the other six I television go to bed sets? Early. Because I go to bed early. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, do you fall asleep with the TV on, or do you shut it off before you I shut fall it asleep? Off. Sleep timer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, here comes uh, here comes Patrick. Let's see here. Add him to the group. Good evening, Patrick. How are you? I'm good. I just have to say that I don't have a television in my <coughs> bedroom. I have the bedroom for two things: sleeping and fucking, and that's it. I see. I'm with you there. Yeah, yeah but it, but it looks like you're putting one in your bedroom now. Well, because I got it so damn cheap. Yeah. Otherwise, and otherwise I wouldn't. Have he, he, this is the third night in a row he's bragged about his cheap that TV the 55 set. Fifty-five inch for two hundred dollars. Yeah, two ninety-nine. Two ninety-nine. Two ninety-nine. That is a good deal. Yeah. If I if I could get that, I would buy one if I got one. And where would you put it, my dear? What I, room? I don't know. Um, Fifty-five inches above the bathtub. <laughs> oh Jesus! I would get a fifty-five. You can soak inch. Well, that way you can soak in the tub, no, right, Rob? For the guests, sure. I might get the fifty a fifty-five incher. Uh, <laughs> and uh, gee, what would I do with? We get rid of your old one. Yeah. You, yeah. Hang another one up there. No, you don't need one. That no, but there's already a big frame up so there. Right, it's just gonna it have off. a frame hanging on the take wall. Take it off. Anyway, he's moving, and he's got he's got to find his receivers. Where could they yeah. be? Are they in storage? Oh, uh, they're probably in the pod, so we're going to take a ride there tomorrow and go through all the boxes. And It's just you don't want to make too much of a mess. You have to open all these boxes and dig. Well, you know no. it's somewhere, you know. Oh, absolutely. But I have the remotes. The remotes are inside. I know exactly where the two remotes are. Are those, boxes, the boxes. Are those boxes going to be at are the house labeled? at the time? Wait a minute. At the time that the DirecTV people come? Well, that's the deal. He's going to show up early Tuesday morning, and I've got three days now to find them. And if you don't find them, hopefully he'll bring one so we can plug in a TV and make sure that the signal is good on the satellite. Yeah, yeah they'll probably do that. They'll probably do that. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. And I need one of those wireless genie, the, the, uh, cause I like to watch TV outside genie. Um, I, sh I call it genie. It is genie. The direct TV has a wireless box that you can, you can use, uh, outside? wirelessly around the house. Oh, that's great. Oh, really? I want to get one of those so I can put it outside. Yeah, uh, Mike, what? Rob, I went to um, to Phil's. What a bunch of snobby people in Wait there! Wait a minute, you're changing the subject. <laughs> We're on one subject. No, no, I've I've got. I uh, wanted to tell that to Rob. No, uh, I went there. It was a bunch of snobby people. They, this is and from I'll last... never go there again. Oh. Wow. Mike, you're you're derailing us into a ditch. <laughs> All right, there. I'll shut up then. Good. Now. Where were we? Back to the box. Back to the box. We got to find your box. <laughs> and I don't mean that well, in any you know, I, I'm not. I'm not. Have, I'm not being to, one disrespectful. Of any... to you, Rob. There's a woman sitting here. Please. What's that? Yeah. Well, you're going to dig through all those boxes and finally pull them out, and they're going to say, "Oh, you need new boxes." Yeah, I can go. I found no, my no, box. No, no, no. I know that. I, I know that. I, that I know. The uh, the other thing is, I've you know talked to text before, and they said that. When you try and do those moves, they're all screwed up anyway, and you got to replace them anyway. So this is a, this is not Directv that's doing the move. It's a, a satellite. It's, it's a satellite local satellite installer. So it's that's not AT and T. It's not Directv. I don't want to talk to Directv because again, <clears throat> if they find out that I'm moving and I'm using an address in New York, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, so, my. oh yeah, because AT and T does direct out here. I don't know yeah, I called the guy called Satman. Okay, well, his it's name still is Satman, and he does he does uh, satellite. He is a, he is a, an authorized Directv dealer. Yeah, but he, he's not he's not affiliated with them. So you keep your address as your address in New York, so you can get the games, right? That's right. That's right. So if if somehow they they are up to what you're doing, uh, you're in trouble. Yeah, what I would do, not in trouble, they'll change it back, and then I'll wait six months and call them and say I'm moving. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know what I don't understand? We live in a very illegal world right now. I think you can get a lot of stuff without having to pay for it. Okay. Well, look, it's so you pay for one thing or another thing, right? Yeah. So if I were to get the, the Washington, D.C. TV stations and I would get the Orioles games and the Nationals games, I won't get those. Instead, I'll get the Yankee games. What's the difference? I'm paying for one regardless. It has to do, I think, with the commissioner of baseball and the reproduction or representation. <laughs> retransmission. <and> retransmission. <laughs> the FCC ruling. Ah, uh, screw the FCC. They've screwed me. There's no more damn radio stations no, to go to work at. So. Yeah, they yeah. fucked us over. Screw them. <laughs> Fuck no, it. That's what it is. It's because the local broadcasting deal, they have their little fits, you know. No, no, it has to do. Get, no, it has to. The, it, no, it has to do with the baseball people. Well, but you know what's even more ridiculous? So right now the Yankees are here in Baltimore. They're playing the, the Orioles in yeah. three games. Yeah. And I have the baseball package, and I can't go on on my uh, any, any device like I normally do, Apple TV or my computer or whatever, and watch the damn Yankee telecast. It's blacked out in this area. Hmm. Why? Even direct now? Huh? Even direct now, that app? It's, I'm not using direct TV. I'm not watching it on the Yes Network. I'm watching it through uh, one of their apps, they, you know, the MLB app. Yeah, but if you have direct TV and you have an account, you should be able to download the app and watch the game. You can't. They won't let you. You can watch all TV, a lot of TV, but not sports. They won't let you stream sports like How that. How about ESPN? The only way you get away with that is if you have a sling box in the home market and you watch it. Rob? So... So what I do is I have a I have a, uh, a VPN that I set to London, and so they think I'm in London, and because I'm out of the country, every game is not blacked out. Well, wait a minute, hold on a second. There you go. I I have a thing that is hooked up to my computer, where I can put up a picture. Now we have to figure out how to get that picture to you. You know. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, I like I told you, I've got a VPN that I subscribe to. It's a yearly subscription, and I can select. I could put my computer on any IP addresses that I want. I could choose the country. So I always choose London when I want to watch the baseball, and I just select the London IP address, and it identifies me as somebody from London. And they don't black the games out outside of the USA. Only in the US. Local back blackout rules apply. Yeah. So as long as I select any other address, I'm good to go. How about and ESPN do. Live? Do they black it out? Who's that? ESPN Sports. Um, they're national, so you you would have to watch it on ESPN. If you don't have ESPN and say it's a baseball game, if and this is why when I cut the cable, I found this out and had to go back. ESPN, Turner Sports, any of the cable companies that carry the playoff games, I thought, well, I'll have the app, so I'll be able to watch it. National broadcasts are all blacked out on those events. They wow. want you to watch them, which is so damn stupid. All right, so run the commercials on the feed, and then who cares, right? Hmm. But no, they, uh, they, they black it out. So I had to go back. Now that I have the actually now that I have the, the the VPN, I could really get rid of it. But I'm hooked on it again. I'm not getting rid of. It. Well, now here's what I I like here, here's the question I was going for earlier. That since uh, there are so many ways to get stuff for nothing, we know how to get TV shows without having to pay for them, right? And movies. Uh, maybe some of you guys don't, but I'm sure Rob and I do. Uh, and uh, but yet no one has ever come up with a pirate um, uh, satellite television receiver. I don't, what would that be? Like, what do you mean? A, uh, you mean somebody that could uh, put no, up a, some, somebody a build, signal? Build, no, build a receiver for satellite mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, not a direct TV receiver and that is able to pick up the satellite without you having to pay for it because it is a signal coming down from the satellite after all. Yeah, you know what? That's a really good point. I 
I mean, what, what's to prevent, for instance, people because it's from probably put- encoded. Yeah, they're all de- they got to be a lot of decoders in there if you're going to pull all those satellites in. And remember, they're controlling it via their computer system. When you put the minute, when I call them up, and I love to do it too, I've done it twice now. I would be watching television. Put on Channel Four here in Washington is right. WRC. Yeah. Channel Four in New York is WNBC. Mm-hmm. When, when I call them and say I'm changing, you know, I just moved. Oh, do you need us to send? No, nope, all taken care of. It's all installed. I just need you to, to, you know, change the address. Okay, give me a second. Bam, <laughs> New York TV right there. It's just so their, you know, their computer systems control all that. But I'm so. just wondering why some genius hasn't built a box that goes around I'm all of that. Say good night. Mm-hmm. Okay, good, good night. night, everyone. Good night. Good safe, night. Safe, safe good night. travels. Huh? Safe travels. Yeah. Oh, safe travels, he said. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah. So lately I've seen this uh, HDTV antenna that they are advertising on Facebook or something, you know, those ads that come up. And they're saying that you can pull in these satellite stations because they have to broadcast two signals. You guys know anything about that? There's one that's encoded and one that has to be out there just to be out there. And you're supposed to be able to pull them in with this certain HD antenna that you stick up on the wall. I'd, I'd never heard that. Is it over the air broadcast? Well, well, yes. no. They, 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 I guess it, they require them to send a, a coded signal and an open signal. I guess I don't know. No, what it is is that all the TV stations now have an HD uh, a signal uh, that goes out over the air. And they have for years, and they, they, these are just antennas that pick those up. You're like you're, right. you remember you used to have rabbit ears. This is the yeah, the, but they're the, the, so that about, you can pick up digital, so you can pick up digital transmission. Satellite stations like ESPN and that sort of thing. Certain ones have to throw out two signals or something. I don't know. Yeah, they're like yeah. close to me. So what you're talking about is the backhaul feed. So when when I used to work in television, I worked in sports. Uh, there'd be a backhaul feed that you used to be able to pick out if you had a KU band receiver or whatever. You we, the, That's the feed that the TV station brings in, and then they put the graphics and the commercials and everything on it, and they send it out to their, uh, okay, right? Okay. But the backhaul feeds today, I don't know what they use. I, I don't know that uh, the regular C-band, or even if there is C-band anymore, but KU band satellite, uh, is you'd be able, in the old days that was cool because you used to watch everything. If you had one of those big dishes on your, yeah, wall, yeah. I had a friend who had one of those, but um, I don't I don't know if that's still the case anymore. I've been on a TV for twenty years. Yeah, yeah. but uh, 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 the you know I often wondered why somebody hasn't come up with a satellite radio, uh, a pirate satellite a satellite radio radio. Because, yeah, they've done it just about everything. Because that like, signal is just playing down here. There, I don't think I. And they they can turn it on and off from your radio if you turn off the service. But they can only turn it on and off because the box that they sell has that capability of being turned off. I think it's so highly proprietary. It'd be very near impossible to try to. Do. I don't. I as long as that signal's coming down, there's some way to pick it up. Yeah, but yeah just, and I would love to, to see somebody do it and scare the shit out of Sirius. Probably a duplicate receiver number or something, you know? You have to rip apart a, a Sirius radio. And, uh, and, and, yeah, and, and backward, figure out. backward engineer it. It probably cost a ton of money and not worth it. Yeah. That's, that's got to be the reason why it hasn't happened. Yeah. Well, same with the receiver for, uh, for satellite TV, uh, TV, same way. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of work. I'm going to tell you how, how, how nobody I, does cable anymore. We everybody I know used to have a box that would de scramble all the channels. Can I tell you? Nobody you, does that anymore either. Can I tell you how stupid Sirius is? Sirius XM. Uh, when I left them, Albert and I were fired at the same time. By the time Albert got to the street, his Sirius radio had been turned off. Wow. <laughs> mine, mine was left on for like what, four years. Mine's still on. <laughs> See that? Interesting. Yeah, uh, and they probably don't even know where to turn it off now. And if they go and turn it off, I'm not going to cry because I never listened to it anyway. But you know, um, I went. I, but and I can't remember my password, so the only place I have it is on my phone. <laughs> you know, so uh, I use it in the car. I'm in the car a lot, 
trying to find local radio stations to listen to anymore is so I listen to CNN all the, all the time in the car. So you, but you're listening to something that's not really serious. It's just uh, no, carrying. Yeah. The, I listen to this, CNN. Yeah. Ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. By the way, you know, I I heard something. You know, you, you and I like talk radio, uh, and um, the fact is that I uh, my friend Richard Sands, who runs a thing called the Sands Report, uh, reported yesterday uh, that. Uh, some guy did some research and found that the listenership by young people today to radio is just drastically disappearing. I believe it. Of course. That people under the age of 25 just don't listen to radio, period. Any kind, satellite, local, whatever. Yes. They hear the song, they download it, and then they keep it. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. You know this fellow Kramer who's on TV who's always – Advertising and uh, about uh, investing. Oh, you Jim Kramer, cut, yeah. Jim Kramer, yeah. But so anyway, I just kind of, I don't normally listen to him, but sometimes I go back by him. Yeah. And I listen, I go, oh, I wonder what's going on. All of a sudden, he talks today about investing in the radio. Uh huh. Did he, did he explain why? It kind of did, but I couldn't understand that it. it didn't make any sense to me at all. I wouldn't invest in the radio business. <laughs> Who's making Unless he knows there's something wait, coming. Wait, what is that horrible noise that somebody's making? <laughs> Somebody blew their nose. Mike's like blowing his nose. <laughs> Mike is blowing his nose. Mike, turn, mute your, mute your phone. Will you, mute oh, your well, Skype, will now you? Now we're all going to get sick. Oh, boy. <laughs> medicine. He just gave it to everybody. There you go. Just me, Mike. Are you there? He's not even there. Maybe busy hacking. Maybe he dropped dead or something. <laughs> it would be be a first for this show. I thought I was going to be playing around on the floor. I thought I was going to be the first one to do it. Anyway, um, uh, I wonder if Kramer knows something. Maybe you know, think it's radio like it did back in the twenties, and then again in the fifties. It's going to have to reinvent itself. Well, no, it's here's here's the here's the point, Rob. It won't reinvent itself. Uh, the way reason it reinvented itself is there was a way. There was still more for them to do. Okay. Uh, so they were competing. So television comes along when they were competing against television. What do they do? They went to, uh, to music formats. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. which was something television couldn't do, and they became mm-hmm. music formats and talk formats and and news formats and things like that. All right, services, and music, uh, and uh, then uh, what else came along that was uh, challenged them? I can't remember now. Now it's the satellite. Well, and well, now, oh, then it, th- no, but now now the trouble is they're having to compete within the wheelhouse that they created to save themselves from television. And they can't do it. If a kid wants music, he's got it on an iPod. Or he can get his music from any one of a number of music services, you know? Uh, he can program the music that he hears in his ears himself, rather than have some radio station do it and then run a bunch of commercials in between it. So, or, uh, but I still believe radio has a local place and the more they pull away from local, you know, that's no, the only no, thing. I mean, they could no, be there for hurricanes. No, no, but, but, but here's the thing. It, 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 that, that's all well and good. I agree with you. The great thing about radio is that you can serve a local community with your radio station. But what radio station does anymore? Most, well, radi- I, most radio stations are simply taking uh, syndicated programming <laughs> off the bird right, that has right. nothing to do with their local community. And not even but, the discussions that are going on have to do with their local community. Right, That's but I think what's going to happen is this whole this whole mess, this whole conglomerate radio thing is going to eventually collapse. And when it does, rising phoenix like from those ashes will be mom and pop radio stations again. And if you don't have these huge multi-billion dollar investments, well maybe you can go out and hire a couple of people, put a little sales staff together and run a radio station if you could buy it for a couple of hundred thousand dollars instead of nine billion dollars for a signal. 
Yeah. It's what happened. They got greedy. They overpaid for everything. They're leveraged to the balls. So mm -hmm. what do they do? They get rid of yeah. everybody and everything. There are literally three big Honestly. broadcasting outfits right now that are on the edge of going bankrupt. Yeah. Uh, Cumulus, <laughs> iHeartRadio, and I can't remember what the other one is now. Offhand. Uh, is, uh, what's the one that's buying CBS radio? It well, starts with uh, that's Intercom, but uh, Intercom. they're not in bad shape. I, in fact, I used to work for Intercom. In fact, well, I, we'll see what happens after they oh, they take CBS radio stations. Well, I mean, CBS unloaded them because they saw the writing on the wall. Right. Well, yeah. You know, and they're in. They're over leveraged. Yeah. They they paid too much money for Here, all these stations. Here's the reason I'm 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 thinking that radio is dead. I mean, it, 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 let me tell you the reasons why I think it shouldn't be. Reason it shouldn't be is the great thing about radio is that with the internet like you and i and we're all doing this show right and people are listening to it out there everybody's listening to it is utilizing one stream okay and there has to be a stream for everybody and then that uses up an immense amount of bandwidth all right with radio you got one signal going out and it, go, it, go, it goes to everybody it, you know there's no thing everybody's attached to that one signal uh that's the advantage of radio but the the problem is it does, it just it doesn't understand what it is anymore. The business is not being run by people who love and enjoy radio. Uh, boy, we have a lot of people eating tonight. Um, yeah, and again, I think the problem is it's they can't enjoy radio. They can't program it aggressively because they don't have any damn money anymore. They're just trying to show a profit. They're all publicly held companies and automated. And, and well, they're automated because uh, they can't afford to pay anybody anymore. Right, so you, can, right. you can't be inventive. You can't be live and local. You can't be there for people when they need you during a hurricane, right? All right. these radio stations, well, they're simulcasting CNN or they're simulcasting whatever. What the FCC wants to do right now, uh, we've heard, is they there's a law that if you have a station in a city, you have to have an office in that city. In other words, right. you have to be transmitting Video. from that city, okay? Right. Uh, the new law will be you don't have to have a, a facility in that city. So that means that people like iHeartRadio could run all their radio stations remotely from the transmitters that are in each of those markets and not even have to have anybody physically working for that station in that city. Once again, thank you, Sandy Dick Hair Pie. Whatever yeah. the fuck his name is. Yeah, it's, and it, well, it's yeah, the, yeah, the guy who's the head of the FCC, Sandy Dick Hair Pie. Good name. Uh, <laughs> That's his name. No, his name is uh, Sanjit Pie or say some Sanjit Pie. Sanjit yeah. Pie, yeah. yeah. A hard on for uh, uh, doing away with uh, preventative. Yeah. So what? What this measures. will mean is somebody like Hi Heart Radio can have, uh, let's say, their hometown is Philadelphia. They have their offices in Philadelphia. All the shows can be coming out of Philadelphia. And all the same programming will go out on all their 1,100 transmitters around the United States. And there's no local representation. If there's a hurricane in, that, in, in Houston, Texas, they're not going to be able to deal with helping people with that hurricane locally. Right. Absolutely. This is, and this is going to be just terrible. So that's going to be another radio killer. All right. The only thing he's going to do is make it cheaper for people to run radio companies. But, but cheaper to what end, right? To the end that no one listens anymore because it's completely irrelevant, right? So then if you have nobody listening, you're going to start shutting these signals down. And what will happen? I have a friend who owns a low-power FM radio station on Long Island, and he makes a nice living. Okay, but let me say this. Let's say tomorrow every radio station in America goes dark. Let's say they all go broke at the same time. They all go dark. Are you going to miss it? Can you exist without it? I listen to the radio oh, well, all the time. No, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not asking you if you listen to it all the time. I'm saying, could you get along without it? And I think I the answer is yes. No, yes, no I'm could. not asking if you miss it, Tony. Oh. I'm saying, could you oh. get along without it? Yeah. I mean, yes. you, you have a lot of other places to go. To, to yep, get your information. Right, of course, I can still access Google News on my uh, phone. I wouldn't miss it. Yeah. I wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah. Well, see, you're, you're of a different generation. You know, uh, you might say, if I ask the same uh, question about television, you might say you'd miss television. I, I don't going think I'd away miss television too. either. 
Well, the, the, the millennials are going to they're going to change that, too. Well, eventually. But right now, it's still kind of slightly on the safe side. Alex, if you had asked me that question about TV five years ago, I would have been inclined to say, yes, I, I would miss it a little, at yeah. least a little. But now, yeah, you know, it's four years since I've been using my computer as my own, like HTPC, Home Entertainment Center. Yeah, I could give five fingered fucks less. Once, once you got Netflix and Amazon and all those places that have content and they're now doing independent, their own content. You know, even if I want to watch tonight, I was sitting around and I'm like, you know, we eating dinner. What am I going to watch? I put on an old episode of Cheers. I program my own TV station, right? It's the same thing. Yeah. Right. It's the same concept as the I radio. Have to go, I don't have to go, what is the program director putting on uh, the, the channels? I can find what I want and watch it. It's all but, there. But, but it, it's still, what I'm saying is, is that it basically... Uh, and I'm not when I say TV, I don't even mean all over the air TV. I mean cable or whatever. You'd still m kind of miss that, okay? But radio, you, there's so many other ways you can get that same information, you know. Uh, but it's not it, passive; it's active. You have to go and figure out how to do it. You just don't yeah. turn it on and have it come to you. Yes, yeah. yeah. uh, I still believe. I still do believe that there you could make a living if if all the WalMarts and all the Home Depots are all shut down for whatever reason. All of a sudden, little mom and pop stores would open up and they would do fine and everybody would make a living again. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with radio. If, if, if the conglomerates went away and, and they lost a shit ton of money and the FCC just decided to sell these, these frequencies to people, local businesses, like yeah. they started doing back in the day. They are they, fair capitalism eats itself eventually. They, Eventually, so but you could start yeah. again. Patrick, you could sell these yeah. stations for 150k, and you could make money, make a living, and hire but you, people. But then, and, but then and pay you got to get people to listen to them. And Patrick's got his hand up. With, like with radio, it, trying to find certain things would be a challenge. And, and Rob was saying, I know, like for me, I'm sure nobody else does this, but like when I'm watching my uh, Green Bay Packer games. Oh. I put the television on mute because I don't want the national broadcasters. Mm. I want the local broadcasters, so I turn the radio on. Right. And the thing is, they do not broadcast over the Internet. Yeah. If they did that, I would be right with you saying, well, you know, that's fine. But they're not licensed to broadcast over the Internet. So yeah. there are certain things and local talk shows. Maybe Milwaukee is unique. But we've got two uh, talk stations that do local talk radio, and uh, the only the only two shows that are uh, syndicated is Rush Limbaugh and Sean Cole. And wow. that's, everything else is local talent. And it's been in one of the uh, just uh, it's the 27th year, and another one uh, I think it's 15 years. So it been forever and it there's no end in sight at least at these two stations in milwaukee so um again i mean like the big thing that i mentioned was trying to find broadcast for sports locally okay you know, okay but, listen, but listen. the demographics for those stations are older even sports radio in new york which does very well there's two sports stations in new york both do very well both skew older the kids aren't listening yeah. So at some point they're going to age out. Absolutely, and I mean I know that. I'm 42. I'm I'm a, as young as that sound. I'm a dinosaur. No, we're I'm, we're talking. When I was talking about this thing, they were they were talking about uh, people that I don't even. What do they call them though? They didn't call them millennials. They call them something else now. Generation X. No, no that's no, after that, millennials. Yeah. No, but it, uh, Generation uh, Z or the something. The 25 and under are just going away. That's it. They know they're they're in just record amounts. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely a problem, and that you're and you're right. That that will be the problem if if you ever try to bring radio back. You'd have to find a way to energize, you know, or maybe what it would be the next generation. Maybe you you lose that one generation, and you'd have to entice the next generation. Oh, well, here's how you. Bring I'm thinking this is how you could very well bring radio back. It would be a facsimile of radio, and it would be uh, coast to coast uh, 
every square inch of the United continental United States, at least the continental United States, uh, Wi-Fi access in your car, on your phone, if you're in buttfuck Sylvania, or if you're in, like, New York or L.A., you know, if you can access that, if you can access the Internet at any of those locations, there you go. No, wait a minute. You, you, you confuse me. What does the Internet have to do with radio? Well, Internet broadcast. Uh, now here, here's, here's the, yeah, this is the point. As cars start putting Wi-Fi or, you know, yeah, it, it, uh, uh, what, that's not what I'm looking for. The word is not Wi-Fi. It's the... No, Internet. Internet access. Because I know my car, I could subscribe to it and the, I'll have the Internet. Thing you've got 4G, on, the thing you, 3G. The thing you've got on your phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, 3G, whatever. In, in, the, in the car, as, as soon as that happens, bye-bye Sirius XM. The satellite radio. I mean, when you can get anything on the Internet, on that radio, in your car, and it's not going to cost you a fortune to listen to it, man, we're off to the races. And I'm doing it right now. Yeah, you can do it right now. Well, I mean, people do it I can't it do it us, everywhere. But that, but mean, that, spots, that means but... that little shitheads like me who have like a couple hundred people listening to me, I got my audience in the car, and somebody else got their audience in the car. As you have and noticed. The, and where, what, where before you used to take the audience and chop them up into, oh, if there were 10 stations in the market, into 10 little groups, now it's thousands. It's, it's tens of thousands. That's of, why there's no uh, money in it. <laughs> and that's why there's going to be no money in it. Nah, it's too fragmented. There's too wow. much. You, you, how do you stand out to become... To make money. If I knew, if I, if I, if I knew the will, answer to that, Rob, this show would be a great success. You know, <laughs> but you got to get above the noise. You know. That, yeah. How do you do that? Then you don't. You just don't. I mean, even people who have a large audience don't make money off of this. They make money by something else they do. Like a Gilbert Gottfried has a good size audience, but that translates into him being able to go into clubs and sell them out when he does his comedy act and to charge big money for the owners who own those clubs. That's the way you monetize the Internet. But you don't monetize it by running commercials. Right. Well, you know, uh, J uh, 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 Jack, I have to call him Jack. Jack uh, Bishop called me one day. He said, I got some guy he wants. He's thinking, well, we can put, do this and we can run some ads at the beginning of the show and blah, 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 blah. And I'd only charge him a couple of hundred bucks a week. And I went, I wouldn't do it. And he said, and he said why? I said, because we don't deliver that to the audience that's sizable enough to sell time to somebody. You know, and I would feel dishonest doing it. If you want to do it, I said, go ahead, keep the money. You don't even have to share it with me. But uh uh quite frankly i i think that after the first week the guy won't pay you the second couple of hundred dollars <laughs> you know um yeah. uh, the reality is the numbers in, in on the internet uh, you, you monetize the internet in other ways now you know it's that 15 year old girl with her beauty tips that gets a million hits on youtube yeah. That yep. makes the money because YouTube pays her. You get money yes, after a certain amount. Kids, girls, probably a millionaire by now. A lot of kids are doing that. Yeah. So, go on the go on and and go to go to YouTube and type how crazy. to how to anything, and there are channels and people have hundreds and thousands of subscribers. Yeah. And yep. those people are making money because uh, it's you know they're, they're driving they're driving a lot of traffic to YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Tony. You know, you know what it basically comes down to is it's really quite simple. The in, the birth of the internet took over everything and put everything out. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Forget, wait, 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 Diane, are you there, Diane? Yes. Turn down your phone. It's making all kinds of. Yeah, it always does this when I start out. I mean, it's only on seventeen out of a hundred. Boy, that's so annoying. I don't know why. That's annoying. What? What is your all... mic? It's not the speaker. What? Yeah, it's not the computer. I don't know. I've got just a regular headset. Is it still doing it? Whatever it's doing? Yeah, yeah. Are you, you what are you using to do this on? Just a headset. No, 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 no. What, 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 uh, are you using your computer? Yeah. Computer yeah, well, go up to Skype. Uh, go up to your audio settings in Skype and make it uh, and put it on what it what is it uh, automatic or something? Uh, automatic. Take off take off automatic. Oh, take off automatic and then bring oh, the sound. Oh, I remember down. that from before. Yeah, now, which I thought I had done. 
Okay, yeah. let's see here. Sorry about that. I'll mute my oh, let's see if I can mute it. audio. Yeah. yeah. Speaker. We're still getting hiss from you. I'll see. Well, yeah. See, we're hearing like every keyboard click and. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I wonder why that's doing that. Because well, your mic is is doing an average. It's sucking up whatever. Yeah. It's trying to it's trying to ma to to magnify all the sound in the room. Uh. And there's it's like automatic gain control. I'm trying to find the. I, I, do you have a PC? Do you have a PC? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go to tools. Go to options. Yeah. You see that? Contacts. Oh, no, no, see see options tools. Right tools. tools. Options. The very top tools. Top yes. menus. Yeah, and then you go to you go to audio settings. Let's see. Yeah, what it, yeah. Oh, boy. And this is the trouble with doing this. this. The trouble with doing I this. Know, yeah, I used to be able to find the tools and it's the, this new Windows 10 thing. Is no, just but the, did you go to tools? Did you I, go? I'm on settings. There's settings and there's audio video. Yeah, yeah well, go, audio. To, go to audio settings. Yeah, I'm clicking on it, but nothing's happening. <laughs> Oh my goodness! You know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna go to my phone then. I don't know why it, it doesn't want to work on this well, computer. Well, it's but. working better now. Are you there? Oh, is, yeah. Just yeah. Leave, leave it like it is. We'll, oh, okay. we'll live with it. If it gets bad, I'll have you go to your phone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's I'll see your picture, picture again. Back. There we go. Okay. Anyway. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I just I well I phoned in because I just wanted to say um, we have two very successful radio stations where where I live. Um, the you know the public the NPR station in Albany is there people call in all the time but the um, Woodstock station WDST I mean they're they're a commercial station but you know they're they're not a franchise thing they're like privately owned I guess and oh. they do all kinds I mean they're on the net they're on the internet they're um, people call you know listen from all over the all over the world they have people you know from Australia calling and stuff and they have like they have different things where you participate a lot. Because like at every noon time they have a lunch where they have a, a theme for the lunch hour and people text in song suggestions for the theme and there's a lot of like you know participation. Now you live they, where? You know, now this is, this, is, this is where. In uh, Woodstock. Woodstock. Oh, Woodstock. New York. Well, you see, yeah, right in the, Woodstock. The thing is that with stations like that, you've got local in markets like that. You have some local stations. Uh, yeah, but yeah, still, I bet th I bet they're having a hard time to financially survive. No, no, no. I don't seem to hear that. I mean, they they What's have the you know they they do commercials. I mean, it's definitely you well, know it's not yeah, like yeah, commercial yeah, yeah. free, but. All what is the what's the format and what's the age of people who listen to it? Yeah, I think it's pretty wide actually, because I wow. mean I'm 61, and, and there's a lot of young people that you know because they they've really they've gotten better actually. For a while there, I wasn't listening because they were just so hung up on Dylan and Janis Joplin and you know all old stuff audience, from, old audience. Yeah. yeah. Well, now they have a new program director in the last couple of years, or, or they did, just kind of got, I don't know if they did some research or something, but now they do a lot of, you know, very now brand new group Rob, stuff that Rob, people listen to. tell everybody here what the prime demographic is. Uh, 18 to 49. That's what, for it. radio? Yep. Yeah. 18 to 49. And well, they after that, that they don't want to know you. After that, they the, don't care if you live or fucking breathe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. as it's, far it's, as like um, where the commercials are aimed towards or something. Yeah, at Madison. Well, what used to be Madison Avenue, the 1849 is the demographic they care about. After that, uh -huh. for some reason, they don't care. But it, you know, it, it's been proven that uh, people older than that have more money and exactly. have more yeah, spending power. Right. But for some reason, Madison Avenue. You know, it didn't used to be that way, but today movies, TV, radio, everything is geared towards the 18 to 49 year old, which is why most of the programming mm -hmm. sucks. And isn't it when, uh, when stations... I guess there's an exception. Isn't it I mean, when stations... mm -hmm. What's that? I was just saying, isn't it when stations start changing formats a lot, that's a sign that they're they're heading down? Mm -hmm. Well, no, it depends. See, like sometimes oh, oh, they, they blow up successful radio stations. They stay. In, they, in, they change formats these days. They change formats like uh, I used to change yeah. lives. 
You know, I mean, it was a big, it was a big yeah, they thing really you know, back in the day where they changed the format and everybody went up in arms and pissed and shit and everything else. And, and now they just do it at the, they, know, well, they do it because like they, it, it, they'll take successful stations and blow them up because yeah. they're not what at, they can't sell it. The Madison Avenue won't buy it. Well, you know, so, right. you know they got high ratings. The ratings are up there, upper demos, and they can't get the money for it. A lot it. of stations right. yeah, change these form. These guys are privately owned. They don't really have to the, deal with the Madison Avenue. The format du jour <laughs> these days is sports radio, and even that's a problem because now the hosts have a Ponzi schemes. Oh, did so, you, know, you heard about that, <laughs> huh, Craig Carton? <laughs> yeah. He didn't know shit about sports either. <laughs> well, he knew a lot about Ponzi schemes, obviously. Yeah, I hope they throw him in jail. I wish they do. What do you mean? I hope they throw him in jail. Because you didn't like his, him as a radio personality. You hope he winds up in jail. I never so, like, You know what? He didn't know sports. Every time I used to turn them on in the morning, I was like, this guy is a fucking idiot, really. He knew he was, oh, Tony's serious about He's always sports. trying to be like Howard Stern or something like that, like a shot. Annoying. Shot. Annoying. He was annoying. I said, this guy's a tool, I said. Yeah. And Boomer, they used to make fun, Alex, of uh, of Mike Francesa. He used to always take shots at him. And, like, Mike never said anything on his show. It's like you saw him. He was just trying to wag the dog. Mike I is see, like you're talking the about people guy in that sports talk. People and he's other, trying to jerk his chain. This, Come on. He's like instance, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Kevin, do you know Mike Francesa? What, what's his name? Mike Francesa? Mike Francesa. He's, he's a national oh, sports I, figure. Yeah. Do you Have you he heard of him, CBS. Kevin? Yes. Have you heard of him? Because Kevin's in California. I may I have. I may have. Have you heard of him, I Mike? Know his last name. I've heard the I name. Think so. Wasn't he? Uh, didn't he work for Imus as a, one of sports deal? Nope. No, no, no. Uh, how no. about you, Patrick? You ever heard of Mike Francesa? Yes. I'd have to see him, yeah. My, uh, Patrick? No. Uh, no. So, uh, you, know, you see, when, when, uh, they don't know Mike. Yeah, no, it, it, that was the other. Used to be that, Mike and the Mando, too. Well, that was the other conceit about New York City that we felt if it happened if it if it's it happened cold. here, it was I, you know, it was worthwhile or whatever. Otherwise, it doesn't. You know, there was New York. In fact, the best. I had a poster. I had a poster used to hang in my bathroom. Have you seen this one? And there's a picture of New York City, and it, it goes on for streets and streets and streets. It's a map. It's streets and streets, and then there's the Hudson River, and then. California. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen it. Or another question is the rest of the world. You know? Yeah. Like, you know what I did the other night, Alex, when you got off the radio? I see him now, but I don't know who he is. He's a WFA. I'm not right on now, the radio yeah. any longer, right. Tony. You know what I used to do? No, when I, the other night you were talking about Bob Grant and him, I went to YouTube, and I, they got a lot of uh, stuff of him up there. He was actually quite entertaining. I was trying to play some clips. No, Bob was a good radio performer. You know. Yeah, they had that. They had, uh, and the other guy you mentioned, that was Google. Uh, and the other it? way, the other way people okay. might know Francesa is he for years was syndicated on the uh, Yes Network, which people get all over the country. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the Yankees channel, right? Yeah. So yeah. he did. He did the his show simulcast on the Yes Network. Yeah. I mean, I'm not glad the guy's going to jail, but he was a punk. Like I, I didn't think he was knowledgeable, really. I. I I don't know. Well, I I'll tell you what, there's lead. there's a guy, if you Google it, you'll find that there's a guy who is doing radio and who, who worked with him at New Jersey 101.5, who's an old radio veteran, worked at WNBC back in the day when they were talk radio. That's how long ago. I mean, this guy who never met Carton, but worked, Carton did afternoons, he did mornings, and he said all he ever did was badmouth him constantly on the air badgering him badgering him and the guy was they called him a cancer at the radio station <laughs> you want me to tell you the truth about me? Uh, let me tell you the truth you know, about guy would say so. hold on a second i've told the story before but i love telling it because i i proved something one day i uh, i was at wmca in new york and the guy went on after me excuse me i'm gonna sneeze again Help. yeah we had the technology tablet too <laughs> to Dr. Tony. <laughs> I was like that. Morphine. We don't have a high pollen count, but I swear to you, I have got hay fever. Anyway, it could be could be dust. There is something yeah. in this apartment that makes me it could be this, killing, could be dust me. Dust. killing me. Anyway, let me let me. Oh, could be. Uh, I I used to go on. Uh, I did a show, and my show went off, and then on came a sports show with John Sterling, who's the voice of the Yankees, right? I like Sterling. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sterling was a fucking nutcase. Was he that crazy? 
this guy talked to himself all the time. Yeah, so I've badly, heard story. so badly that one day I'm in the control room at WMCA, and off we have a you know we had a remember the the sound locks you had you had a door to the control room but then you had a little space yes. and then you had another door. Yeah, he's in the sound lock, and he's saying, "So what are you doing tonight?" And so I look over at him and I go, I don't know, why are you asking me? And he's not talking to me. He then says to himself, well, I don't know, what are you doing tonight? This, this guy was an absolute fucking nutcase. But anyway, he came on after me. I was and, thinking out loud. And I, I, I'm going, I'm, I'm all, uh, getting off the air, and we're in a newscast, and some guy says, hey, Alex, you got to stick around. You got to take over the next shift. Sterling is in a terrible traffic jam and is on his way, but he won't be able to get here for a while. You're going to have to do the sports show. Now, if you know me personally, asking me to do a sports show is like asking me, well, in my particular case, and don't take offense to this, Brian, taking a dick up my ass. I just, you know, I don't know how to do it. All right? But you have a sports Emmy. I have a sports Emmy. <laughs> I, but I, I didn't know how to. So they you just said, have to ease it on in there. Do the sports show. <laughs> well, that's essentially Don't what I. The loop. That's what I did with the sports show. I so I go on the air, and I figure maybe I can just lie my way out of this. So I that go on. Bullshit. Yeah, you're a good talker. First of all, all I had to have was confidence. <laughs> That's that saying I, that, if you can't dazzle yeah. them with And I said, I'm here. John, John isn't here, but I'm here to take your calls. So let's just go to the phones immediately. I was going to say, don't take calls. <laughs> no, 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 no. no what am I going to do? I, mean, I can't sit there for 10 minutes and talk sports. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I know they're the Yankees and the Mets. And beyond that, I know precious little. All right? <clears throat> Yeah. So guy, like a therapist. You just get them to do well, the talk. They right? call up, and then they would say, Alex, so what do you think the Yankees' chances this year? And <laughs> I would give them an answer that was nebulous, but it was what they wanted to hear. Obviously, <laughs> they wanted to know the Yankees were going to do. They were Yankee fans, and they wanted me to say they were going to do fine. I said, yeah, they got a good pitching lineup. I think they're going to do very good this year. And I bullshitted my way through 20 <laughs> minutes of sports radio, and nobody caught on. <laughs> Nobody caught on. Nobody phoned me up to say, Alex, you don't know a goddamn thing about sports. They're calling well, me. They're right. calling you're me up saying, radio, hey, 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 when Sterling doesn't do the show, you should do it, Alex. You're great. You know. <laughs> and I learned that you could do sports radio and not know anything about sports. <laughs> just wonder, just, wonder why you just they didn't say just continue doing your show till he gets here. Well, they did because they wanted me to do the sports show. I don't know. That was their decision. Because of the lineup or something. Yeah. Well, you know, people like to hear themselves talk, so that's that's very astute oh, that fuck. you need to I, just give them I, give them the rain, enough rain, you know. When I was in radio, like that. I worked at a station on Long Island that did. Uh, I did the music show that started at noon, but there was a talk block from ten till noon, and at eleven o'clock in the morning, there was a show called Ask Your Neighbor. It was hosted by the wife of the owner of the station and the, the show was all about household hints and recipes and ways to get stains out of this and that and every once in a while i would get a phone call saying you need to do the 10 the 11 o'clock show is called ask your neighbor and i'd be like really i was 21 years old and i mm -hmm. i i could I, I what do i know about recipes what do i know about getting stains out of at a carpet or whatever but you sit there and you take calls and and, you know, it's, hey, you know, I got this great tip for this. Oh, it's great. Great to hear it. And people call up and say, hey, how do I do this? And I go, you know what? Maybe uh, the next caller will be able to tell us that. So, ah, yeah. Just move it on that way. You know, I got a remark you know for Rob. What, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, I got a All remark right. for Rob. Rob, if I, if I were you with my personality, I would have said, well, I don't know about, I don't know much about cleaning, cooking, or, 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 or any of that stuff, but I do know how, how, I do know a thing or two about removing cum stains off of queen size mattresses. <laughs> 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 I would have a oh, Brian. I don't, get, I don't know how to get the stains out, but I'm good at creating them. <laughs> Here we go. And I also just realized a good way to lose my job. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, exactly. that would probably be getting some censorship. Rename the like... show, or name the segment Pecker Tracks. Pecker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, 
Hey, Alex, I have a question for you, and yeah. it's something I never knew. I, like I, you know, I knew you at MCA, and I knew you at PLJ. Yeah. What, what was it at PLJ? What, when they, you know, I know why you left MCA because they got the Yankees, right? Right. What was the reason why you were out at PLJ? Well, that was five years. I was there for about five years. You know, I can't remember. It just, it was like. I, 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 they brought me over there and I did mornings for a short time, okay? And then they put me on overnight starting at 2 in the morning. Now, a lot of people who are listening to me would go, you went on at 2 o'clock in the morning. What a nothing slot that is. But in New York City in those days, 2 o'clock in the morning was a great slot to have. Talk, yeah. Because, you know, I went to San Francisco and did a morning show and probably had a smaller audience in actual size than I had overnight from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the morning in New York City. Uh, and it was a great time to do a show. And I was just there for five years because they forgot I was on the air. You know? Was Larry Berger the PD? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe they just wanted to go more music intensive? Uh, I can't remember, but I do remember I did not like Larry Berger one bit. Okay? No. And I, and I, I you know, I, I felt he was a piece of shit. And I still do. Uh, I can't remember. One day they just said, well, that's it. You know, I can't remember if there was a reason or anything like that. I think uh, they went music. And they went music, yeah. The overnight, yeah. yeah. yeah because Berger was a music kind of program director. And, right. you know, I was brought in at a time when uh, the programming people wanted to do something different because it was a progressive radio station, progressive music, you know. And uh, it was slowly changing from that as I stayed there. So, uh, you know, I, I, you know, it, it's hard for me to say why, you know, when I did my history of my life, I don't think I even talked about why I lost my job there. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't because I don't really remember the circumstances except that I was there for a long time. And one day they realized I was there, <laughs> you know. And uh, what are we paying this guy this kind of money for overnight? So, you know, um, they just uh, they just dropped me. Uh, but that that's all I remember. Isn't that weird that I don't remember how that one came to an end? I do remember how PLJ came to an end because it was pretty spectacular. I had, a, uh, I had three, uh, a whole, almost a whole page on the sto uh, whole page story may have been a whole page in the New York Times on my firing at WMCA. That's how big that oh, was. Man. Yeah, I remember that. I in remember in variety, if I was older, I would have been there. In, 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 in Variety, there were four stories on one page about my firing. You know, Wow. Uh, my firing was a big deal. Um, it, it was, oh, this is really, you're going to love this. This is terrible. Station was owned by R. Peter Strauss. His father was Nathan Strauss, a pretty good guy, very much into being a liberal and political and doing good works for the community. And uh, he started a thing called Call for Action, where you could call these people and they would help you with your problems that you might be having. Great guy. The son... Not so much. A doofus, you know. Uh, but he had to live up to his father's reputation. His father, by the way, first guy ever to do editorials on radio. You just didn't do editorials. You didn't come up with editorial comments on radio. And he, as an owner, said, I want to do editorials. And he did editorials. So that was the kind of guy Nathan Strauss was. So now his son, Peter, our, our Peter Strauss, fires me. And by the way, never trust anybody who uses for their first name an initial. Okay, L, you know, <laughs> H.R. Halderman, you know, things like that, yeah. you know. H.R. Puffin Anyway, H.R. Uh, Puffin Stuff, another <laughs> asshole. Anyway, uh, so uh, I, I get fired. And uh, they, in, in Israel, they had a town they named after... Nathan Strauss, called Nathansville, <coughs> or Straussville, I think. Either Straussville or Nathanville or something like that. But there's a city named after him. And so he was a big deal in Israel. And the headlines in the paper were, Son of Nathan Strauss Fires Jewish Radical. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there were moves to change the name of the city. It was that bad. That was the wow. that was the kind of I mean, being embroiled in that mess 
really was quite amazing, you know. Uh, and, and by virtue of that, ABC decided to hire me because they wanted me to come over and, and utilize me because I was getting so much publicity. And so I did a morning show. And then they decided they wanted to do music in the morning. But, hey, we'll put you on at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I stayed there for a long, 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 long time. And uh, a little fun it. fact about R. Peter Strauss. Yes. In 1998, he married Marsha yes. Lewis. Yes, who's Monica Lewinsky's mother. That's right. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Don't get a kick out of that. His wife died. Uh, uh, her, her name was, I can't remember her name now, uh, Ellen Strauss. She was the, this was one of those, those marriages made in, in some kind of, I don't know, back room somewhere. He was R. Peter Strauss, the son of Nathan Strauss. Nathan Strauss, by the way, the guy who started, I believe, along with someone else, Macy's. That's right, Macy's Department yeah. Store. Wow. Macy's That's Department Store, and then he, then he started WMCA, <coughs> which the initial stood for the McAlpin Hotel, where the, uh, ho where the radio station was first housed. And um, she was he, uh, Ellen Salzberger, uh, Ellen Oak Salzberger, who was the uh, daughter of the owner of the New York Times. What is that? It must be Tony's neighbors. Oh, I think I had a car go by. Maybe that was. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, and and it um, uh, she so she was the uh, heir to the New York Times, and so they were married. And she was, can I say, one of the biggest cunts I ever worked for in my life, because she had this 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 attitude about the people who worked for her that you could cut with a knife. And I'll give you an example. She always used to refer to us in polite conversation as the little people. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. We had a severe case of quadrilitis. Yeah, we were the little people. I thought, what am I, a fucking elf? What is this, you know? Uh, and uh, she then, I guess she died, and our Peter Strauss was single, and he met Nancy, what, Nancy Lewis was her name, or whatever, and it was Mar Monica Lewinsky's uh, mother, and he married Monica Lewinsky's mother and became Monica Lewinsky's, uh, I guess, uh, stepfather. stepfather. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was an idiot. He was an idiot. He wasn't up for the task. His father was a great man, though. Father was a great man. Uh, I saw something about the guy who owned the club, uh, Club 51. They did an article on him. He's still around, believe it or not. Studio 51? Studio, yeah, 54. studio 51. Four. And now he owns... It's studio, uh, it's studio 54, Mike. Oh, 54. Yeah, sorry, 54. Uh, now he, him and his wife now own a health club in, uh, somewhere in Los well, Angeles. I, I, it must be the other guy who owned it, but because the, the guy who did own it died. Yeah, he was dead. He's dead. I can't remember his name now. Very flamboyant guy. Coke overdose. Find, find I was something. wondering what he died from. Yeah, I Coke. don't know. I don't know who the other guy was. I'm trying. Wouldn't to... surprise me at all, Kevin. Find uh, something. Was a Jewish name. Oh, by uh, the way, we have a full house. Let me just say that. Yeah, I noticed that. Tim, Tim called, but we haven't heard a word from Tim. Hello, Tim. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I put on mute so that I wouldn't make any background noise. So. Yeah. Steve Rubell. Steve, Steve Rubell. Rubell. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. He owned all those nightclubs, right? Uh, and he owned that steak place. I thought it might have been Douglas. I was watching it. Hang on. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll look it Maybe up. Any, anyway, let me see here. Uh, Studio 54. Studio. Yeah. <laughs> and he died. Steve died of AIDS. Yeah. yeah. Who was the other co-owner of that place? Was well, it that's, that's, who we're, that's who we're trying to figure out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Studio 54. Find, 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 no, 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 find something, find, uh, uh, the former nightclub, blah, 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 he, well, it was Ian Schrager. That's the, is that him? Was that might be him. Uh, no, it's not him. Well, uh, they were, uh, the only two guys that uh, did it were Rubel and Schrager. Yeah. So I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. If I can find a damn thing. Yeah. Um, 
It was the old CBS uh, yeah. Studio 52. Yeah. So why they called it Studio 54, I have no idea. They could have called it Studio 52, <laughs> and then Mike would have been right. Yeah. <laughs> I was right then. <laughs> well, the cops would go to Studio 52. Jack Dempsey was uh, that, not Jack Dushy. Dushy. Dushy? D-U-S-H-E-Y. <laughs> no, Dushy. that's Steve that Dushy, been, one of the co well, If you grow up with a name like that, you're going to have an attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's a rough life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, Renee. Nice. Renee joined us, by the way. Oh, cool. Hey. Yeah. Uh, I agree with um, about the MLB earlier when you guys were talking about Rob, Rob was talking about how he can get around it. It it's just that's the only thing, only way I've heard of it now. So I just wanted to commiserate with you a little bit. Going. <laughs> Yeah, Listen, I, I can't watch those games. Any of those games on my big TV, I have to watch them on my computer. Oh, because I can't I figure can... out. I can't figure out how to get the VPN to work and make the whole house London. Because yeah. <laughs> I would do that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I don't understand it's, VPN. It's just a tunnel, right? You create this tunnel. And you, was, uh, what happens is you subscribe to a company, and what that this company does is they own a bunch of IP addresses all over the world, right? Okay, yeah. And so you get on one of their networks. Okay. And it, once you're on one of their networks, you have this end-to-end -end secure connection that nobody can penetrate, nobody can, uh, nobody can capture what packets of data are being transferred back and forth. And I, I can choose a network anywhere in the world with this service. So others, you know, you're on specific networks, maybe locally, uh, but it's it's for mostly for security purposes of VPN. Yeah, but so how, but it stands for I believe it stands for virtual private network. Yeah, but how yeah, do, right. how do you how do you uh, physically like if I wanted to have a VPN right now, how yeah. would I do that? Well, you subscribe to a service. Okay. And then you download the client on your laptop or on your iPhone. I use the same thing on my iPhone. And they say, by the way, that everybody should be using a VPN on your iPhone. Yeah. On your yeah. smartphone. Yeah. yeah. They say oh. it for security purposes, everybody should be using a VPN. Once yeah. you connect it up, it's like dialing. It's like connecting to any other service. You have a you have a username and a password, and then you just log into it, and that creates this secure connection. Good. You're behind that wall, yeah. Okay, so suppose I do it just on my yeah. desktop computer. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Yeah. I just I just click it on and get the VPN going, and then all my outgoing stuff is going to go over this VPN so network. I forget it's, it's on. I forget it's on sometimes. So today, I, tonight, after I watch the Yankee game, I was at you know in London. I all I do is on the top of my bar, I just select the VPN thing. I choose connect and i could choose melbourne sydney you know new york mm. city seattle texas wherever i want once it's connected i'm connected so after i got through before i dialed in here i went to amazon to look at something and yeah. i'm going what the hell's going on everything is showing up in pounds or you know <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> it, it doesn't take you to the american sites it takes you to the european because it thinks you're in london oh okay Oh, how funny. Now, do you have uh, to pay for that? Yeah, do you pay for it? Is yeah, I pay, pay? Uh, it's like 30, 40 bucks a year or something like that. Oh, you usually cool. have a free trial or you have a, a, a free option with limited features, but their features are very how, limited. Well, how well, limited so you want to go okay, so how, let, let's let's say I'm, that too. Let, let's say yeah, I've got my VPN limited. on, but I'm doing this show. Will I still be able to get you guys? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I could turn on the VPN now, and then if you were to go, if I go to GabNet... You would think I'm. You would. I could show up. I'll, I'll tell you. I'm going to turn it on right now, and All then the I'm, you're going to you're going to find somebody from New Zealand listening to you, on Gabnet. Really? Yeah, all the stuff is yeah, in the well, back. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. There's a way or well, place I can find out who's listening to me from where. Hold on a second. Right. So I'm going to go. I'm okay. going to choose well, don't, connect don't, in New don't, Zealand. Don't, don't, I don't know if I'm going to get disconnected from here or not. You mm -hmm. might. Oh yeah, you will. Oh, Possibly you, gotta, you will, but you, you just sign back, back in, and there you go. You have to sign back into your VPN. Let me see here. Let me. Oh, Our company used to work on all VPN. Well, I, so it's, it's like it's wearing a ski mask, right? Yeah. Or if you're touring, down like, it's like wearing a condom. Okay, let me log yeah. in here. 
I'm over a wall and you hide. You know? All right. I'm Wait. I'm going over to my uh, my statistics. Right. So, uh, and then I'm going to current I listeners. Fuck so they don't send you okay. sugary love letters. I, 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 you I, violated copyright. We have somebody tonight, by the way, and hello to you in France. Everybody else is in the U.S., but everybody we have France. Give it a give it a couple of seconds. New Zealand will show up. New, New Zealand will show up. Okay. Hey, Rob. Yep. Uh, Rob. Look in the yeah. chat. There's the guy I was talking about. I found it. Well, it's Canada, France. Rob, isn't isn't it important to pick a country that's uh, has a uh, very solid, like Switzerland or some? I'm sorry, Sweden. Isn't Sweden one of the better countries to have your VPN because they don't have any agreements and you're more private? <coughs> Are you sure? Or is you're right. Are you sure? You're, you're are absolutely you, right. Are, are you sure that you're not going through uh, through Canada? Because I do. Canada I came am. up just recently. Came up sec, uh, about a minute ago. No, it's not right? Canada. I am logged in. <clears throat> you should be able to get Canada on Facebook, though, right? Through Facebook. No, maybe I just have somebody in Canada listening to me. Uh, and we have somebody in France. There's the U.S. Another person in the U.S. Uh, now is that through Facebook or is that through See, Facebook? I would think yeah, you no, can see No, no, I'm looking Facebook. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at the Gabnet site. Oh. Uh, oh, maybe maybe because you haven't uh, try the Gabnet audio there for a second. See if you can get that going and let me see if you Oh, I can. hear it. Do you hear it? I, I hear it. Yep. You hear the Gabnet audio. Yep. Well, it's you should driving me crazy. I had to mute it. Then you I'm should wide. be here. You're a little bit so hurt. one of the you're things what you were before too. I don't know if that's well, be, yeah, and so were you guys because this uh, yeah, this, that's right. The feed, the feed it's is not take as a, uh, it's got to take an extra step to get to the VPN. Right. So right. Alex is now Big Brother, right? A big Brother? What do you yeah. mean by that? You're, well, you're, tell you're, well, you're able to trace a lot of information. Oh. If well, people aren't using VPN. Yeah. Well, I, I I still don't understand. You know, I, I, is it that I'm getting older yeah, that I, I can't so I can't now. I can't get these concepts lately. Maybe if I were over with you, uh, Rob, and I was at your place and I saw you going through this, I would know how to do it. You know, hey, hey, it's well, does it, like, the, me, uh, like Jeff, I Jeff, can't even figure out what you do. Jeff, does hey, this? Hey, Alex, it's, I got an example. What? Pretend, pretend you're at a cocktail party. Yeah. And the best ventriloquist in the world is there, and you wouldn't be able to figure out who's talking to you. Right, Rob? They <laughs> can't identify who you are, and they can't get in, can't hack your system, can't identify, you know, they can't gather your information, personal information if yeah. you're in a VPN. Yeah, we just lost, uh, we just lost uh, Rob's picture. I think he's going back off of VPN. Oh. Okay. Uh, Alex, check the, yeah, the chat. Wait a minute. Check the chat. Uh, wait a minute. I want to ask Jeff something. Jeff, does any of this make sense to you, this VPN stuff? No. No. Not at all. It, it, me neither. And, and I think were I a little bit younger or were I at Rob's place we're, and he could little, show it to me, I would understand it. Yeah, I it, I don't it's think really, it has really to do with easy. Age. It has to, everything to do with familiarity. Yeah, I think you to learn the information. Because I've yeah. always, the I've stuff al that you do, I would never be able to figure out all the. I, I down, I download stuff like I downloaded that TV thing that you just to see it. Yeah, I downloaded that, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to figure this out. So you believe me, this is just a client connecting to a server. You've got a username and a password. That's really all it is. And once you're in. You have a secure connection. That's all. Yeah. Nobody. Once you're connected, you're 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 inside of a a, a tunnel. Basically, it's a tunnel. Yeah. It's a private virtual networking tunnel, so that people cannot intercept your packets. For example, if you were to download illegal movies or content, you could get away with it if you have a VPN because nobody knows yes, who you are. About. Now, I don't do that. I really don't. But I, because I didn't get it for that purpose. But if you wanted to, that's a way to get away with it because they can't figure out. You just select you're from a different state, and the IP address they can't identify you. It creates an intranet rather than an internet. 
Craig? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. It's not an intranet. It's different because from that's an that's intranet. how we used to work at where I used to work is, you know, you always had to log in a second time. You get into the VPN and then you get onto the the intranet, and it was no that that sure. intranet is your company's is your company's that, network. That's what an yeah. intranet is. You yeah, well, needed the right. VPN yeah, to be it, able to connect to that intranet. It was only from when when I was working at home, I would have to use the VPN to get to right. the intranet. That's what it right. was. Yeah, yeah, same no, thing. It's it's just a private tunnel. That's all it yeah. is. And it and hey, it's. Rob, and I disagree. I mean, I'm going into the realm of the lost philosophical argument here, and I won't take very much of your time. But I disagree with the whole notion of it being illegal because to me, it's no different than as David Letterman once pointed out with Napster back 20 years ago, 20 some odd years ago. It's no different than uh, you know recording you know, songs off of the radio on a, on a cassette tape. Or recording movies that are playing via your cable box. Yeah, it's, you know. it's the same thing. Uh, I don't know about that because a lot of people don't go to the movie. I have friends who don't ever go to a movie. They just download everything. And I think that's wrong. Yeah. You know, these people it's, have... You're not paying at all for it. You're not paying anything and that's yeah. wrong. I mean, you know, I don't it's believe a, It's that. the old BMI thing, you know, that the, the, they... They get paid thing, pennies per play, you know, that kind of thing. It's Otherwise, one thing to care. buy a CD and make a copy of it on cassette so you could play it in your car. Yeah. Or if you wanted to make a mixtape or something like that where you own the music and you and you took CDs and you mixed one song into yeah, another. Yeah, but once like you get rid of the thing. CD that you purchased, then you say you give it to a friend or if you just sell it back to a store that uh, sells second-hand music. Uh, technically, legally, you're supposed to destroy the uh, copy you made. Aren't okay, you? Well, let me ask you this question then. Maybe yeah. I, maybe this will make more sense to me. When I use the internet now, I go on, I use FiOS, I, I go to some other place or some site or whatever. Now, if I initiate the VPN, what then happens to my signal from FiOS? You will no longer be identified by a FiOS IP address. It's encrypted. I see. No, it's not encrypted. It's you. You. If you. Did you ever go to a browser? And, and type by the way, you can turn this on and off, right? Yes. So go in other words, if I if I point. had if I paid forty bucks a year and I got the app and I just clicked it on, I would yeah. then be invisible or have a different IP address than the one Correct. that I have. Now that That's can right. be a negative as well because there are some places that need your IP address in order to make things work. Am I right about that? Um. No, unless yeah. you have a um, no, that would by the be way, depending uh, upon for people who don't know what we're talking about when we say IP address, and to you and I that seems like a no-brainer, but some people don't know what we're talking about. Every signal that you have, like your 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 uh, your internet service going from your house, has an IP address. Every device has an internet it, it, protocol. It, it, yeah, it's your internet protocol. Internet it's your it's your protocol. address. It's just like a phone number. Only it's, it's the internet yeah, that's phone. A good, that's a good. Description. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's basically. Uh, scanners and uh, scanners have IP addresses too. Who, who? Everything on the internet has an address, either an IPv4 or an IPv6 address. That's that's how the hackers get in. They go into these low security uh, devices right. Right. and back into the system. Um, has anybody watched um, a person of interest when the TV show was on? No. Yep. They used to I, do that a lot. They, they, nobody could trace where they were coming from on their phone calls or their computer access because they're just using all these tools that used to be saved for hackers but now is available in this package, basically. <coughs> right, Rob? Yeah, so Silicon Valley did a thing about that, the, t the show on HBO. Yeah, did you guys I mean, hear about Equifax, Equifax today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard about it a couple yeah, of days. They, 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 they retired. <laughs> the CIO and the CSO retired, and their golden parachute is going to be paid in rubles. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> they don't care. They still That's got cute. their money, right? Mm. But they should be going. They should be going to, uh, under investigation, not retiring. There's a ton of class action lawsuits. They're, yeah, they're gonna. They'll be. They'll be questioned. Nobody's asked who was behind the hack, though. Was it a oh. foreign country? I don't know. Doesn't don't matter. Know. Your information was stolen. Birthdays. Everybody's shit you can do about it. Well, you know, the, I, 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 the thing the I was thinking about with these guys, I, with these guys quitting, was it their fault? 
or yeah, or, they were, or, they, they or, were head of security. Well, wait, 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 hold on a second. Was, yeah. but was they it, sold their stock before was they it, quit. Was it their fault, first of all? Secondly, is Equifax doing that because they think it's going to mollify all of us who got our stuff stolen? So I no, can no. answer that. Yes, right. I, no, they I can they answer that. They want to get out of legal jeopardy is what they want. Same, same when, reason for That doesn't get them out of legal jeopardy. When you're they a security a officer. Bit, when you're a security officer for a company and you put your name on cer certain documents, yeah, the, you can go to prison if if you're falsifying those documents. Now, the only way you're, you're not liable is if you if you can prove with those documents you did best effort, right? It's something yeah. called due best diligence, effort, right. due diligence, best effort. Otherwise, if you falsified any of those documents, you can go to prison. If Goodbye. they know you falsified those documents, especially as the Sasso, you know, those guys who were like the security officers for big companies like that, they're yeah. responsible personally for that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. They want but, to get the retirement package before uh, the thing blew up. But what if Equifax did this just to sell a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, ID uh, protection for everybody in the country? Don't they have to give it to them? You would think they would have to give well, them no, this they do, But only for 12 months. And then they're going to, they were, they were asking for credit cards and after yeah. 12 months, they were going to start charging you. Yeah. And well. now everybody's going to think they need protection service and uh, they weren't making enough money. They wouldn't have, I, 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 it's, I don't think I, it's a big hit to the, hit the company. It real quick. It's a big hit to the company. I doubt they would yeah. put something out there like that. No, well, I, that's I, I don't think so either. I would it's think that the, uh, the CEOs would have stuck around if they thought they were going to make money off it. But it could be an inside job too. Somebody that was really yeah, uh, it's, it's run of the boy. Yeah. Has has, has there been any cases where that people know of where this compromised information has affected them? Not yet. Not no, yet. But, well, but, we nothing we've heard of. We've we could have been sold number, ten times you, by now. You have a social security number your whole life, so they can hold it for years. That's they right. can sell it now. The the party yeah. buying it can hold it for years. Now social security is gonna have to come up with a new identifier. Just like Medicare's come up with a new identifier next year, yep. and you should have to have a 16-digit number, a pin, and a password, and some kind of graphic almost. Um, you know, and you can everybody should freeze their credit re their credit reports, and everybody you can also go to your bank and get password protection on an additional password on your credit cards. And stuff. So, how does that uh, work? Have, what, do mean, you, what do you mean uh, freeze they your my credit? Capital One Visa to, you, you they changed my uh, Capital One Visa card. A week before this hit, like Capital One knew, and I had no hits on my card, but they said it was compromised. So I wonder if it was compromised to the Equifax. I don't know yet. I haven't been, haven't been able to get through, but you I don't know why I got a new Capital One number. I, I don't think that – I think uh, what's more dangerous is not that they'll – get your credit card number and use it because we're not rely we're not liable for that anyway what's more dangerous is them having name address phone number social security number what that and birth date what that means is they can be you they can they can they can buy a house yep. yeah, and they, they can, can buy a house in some states you're liable that's right that's exactly the biggest, that's the big fear that's the biggest thing i'm worried about that's is why you need to have a freeze you get, on your credit report because you can't buy a house without a credit report and if you put a freeze on it so nobody can get to it unless you give the unless you request it with the password, how do you do that? Set. You just call you know, them you up. You contact all three all three uh, credit reporting bureaus and ask for your or, your account to be frozen. The, the thing that irritates you do it me every so many months, I think. The thing that the thing that irritates me is that I am I'm with Experian and I've done uh, I, I signed up for their credit watch right. service and everything else. And I still have yet to get a notice that Equifax had a breach from them. <laughs> uh, and I'm going, what the fuck? Renee you know, had Renee had her. You don't know any stock school. in Equifax. Wait a minute. That's probably why. Renee had her hand up. Renee? One of the three companies out there now, which is TransUnion, Equifax, and what's the third one? Anybody you know what it is? Experience. If you contact Experience, yeah. if you contact one of them. They should be freezing all three of them for you. Yes, because one out of three freezes everything. Now so that I have my freeze, house, I should so if you freeze Equifax, you won't get through TransUnion or Experian. If you freeze Experian, you won't get through TransUnion or Equifax. Right. Because so they have to pass all three of them to get a loan. Well, maybe right, we. Maybe so they we, don't have to call all of them. 
well, maybe everybody should be considered not a uh, not a financial risk any longer, and <laughs> give anybody a loan. You know. Well, they're saying that they may have to do away with the social security numbers because, the, you know, over the years, social security number was supposed to be the the holy grail. You don't give it to anybody now. People are asking for it left and right. You can refuse yeah. to give it to them, but then you won't get what you want. Oh, what a nightmare! I tried to do that recently with. Uh... I think it was Verizon to get set up with Verizon. Exactly. I was oh just, my God! I I, yeah. I I couldn't get a if I didn't give them my social security number. We tried three different ways, and they said, "Sorry, we can't help you." Yeah. I had yeah. to call back and give them my social security number. Hmm. And that's that's a that's a, a freaking wow. utility company. They should have no Jeez. reason to ask for it. Never used to be like that. Yeah. 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 Well, Everything's computerized, and that's a you know that's a, a unique identifier for everybody. Yeah. yeah. In five years, we'll have a twelve digit number and have to do three-step verification and everything else. When probably. I was a young boy, I don't think there was ever a term like identity theft. Of course not. Nope. There was yeah. no, there was no uh, you'd have to break into an office and steal a bunch of files, and how many could you really take? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> By the way, you realize here that we, without Phil being here tonight, we have a grand slam. We don't just have a full house, but a grand slam. A full. Uh, what? 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 What's beyond oh, a because, full house? Because there's a uh, eleven or royal flush. Yeah, eleven with oh, me. Royal oh. flush. That's it. We have a royal. I flush. I was just gonna say. Do you know what a grand slam is? Because that. <laughs> well, it's a nice. breakfast at Denny's. That I know. <laughs> 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 yeah, two eggs. Two eggs and two pa uh, two pancakes and two sausages. Sure By the way, do somewhere you see? Uh, where, where, did I, where did I see this? Some show. I think. I think it was uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, they did a cartoon of uh, the people at Denny's decided they wanted to do a Grand Slam cartoon. And so they had each of the parts of the Grand Slam breakfast represented as cartoon characters with little ha arms and legs and feet and things like that. And the one that didn't exactly look good was the sausage link. <laughs> because oh it looked like a turd with legs. It'd run around the bases and run into that pancake. <laughs> At least it wasn't full of juices that it squirted out its top. Yeah, you're well, oh, right. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm getting hungry. Yes, Mike. Uh, <laughs> check, going check, diet. check the chat. I found the information I was looking for. It's in the chat. Read it. That's I, I was correct. It was Mark's uh, something or rather. Well, uh, I was Fleish. right. Mark Fleischman. You're right. Well, I don't have it. Uh, this was after, oh, though. This was... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, was he in trade or something? He bought the club. He bought the club. Mm -hmm. Then oh. went out of business. Then he tried to regain oh, oh, so it again. He, oh, so he, so bought, he, yeah. bought, he bought the club after it was a big yeah. club. Right. Yeah. Then he, then he well, resold well, it. That's not a big deal that some guy who bought the place died. You know, but well, uh, he, went, yeah, he went to jail for it, though. Are you still there? Something. Are you still there, Renee? She, she had a phone call. Oh, she had a phone call. Oh, well, and we just lost Diane. Yeah. Oh, I was getting so used to having a full Grand Slam house full whatever. Oh, there we go. She's on the you're on the phone, are you? Yeah, and she's talking to somebody. We're almost through here. Uh, one thing I just wanted to say before I go. I really have had it with Facebook on one level. Uh, I have this, um, you know, I have my Facebook page and I have 5,000 people on it. And when it goes down to 4,999, hookers start trying to become my friend. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, look, fight, fight. Oh, wait a minute. Cat fight, cat fight, cat fight. Wait cat a minute. Fight. Let me make that big screen. Let's go. Let's Let me the make books. this big screen. Get look at that. Full screen. Cat fight. <laughs> Are they are they growling well, at each other? I'll give you one of those every night if you want. Uh, there we go. There we go. I'm betting on I'm betting on the one on the bottom. Anyway. Uh, no, 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 no. See, we 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 end our show tonight on a big note. Cat fight. Let me just get all these people back where they should be. There was a girl. Yeah. Uh, boy, that was uh, that was a nice cat fight. Uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, uh, so I don't know what to do about this. So if anybody wants to be my friend, whenever you see it goes down to 4,999, become my friend immediately so I don't have to wade through all these fucking hookers writing me wanting to be my friend. You know, you know how to fix that, Alex? 
How do you fix yeah. that? You got to pay Facebook in rubles, uh -oh. and they'll uh -oh. stop doing that. Uh, it really? Uh -oh. Back to that. Uh -oh. Oh. Uh -oh. The other yeah, thing, uh, but, uh, I just sent you a fund request, Alex. Pay for in rubles, the same one. Yeah. The other part of China was Macau with all the bandit guys, the casinos are at. Casinos are. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, we're uh, we're we're plumb out of time here, and I've got a white line going through my picture. I have no idea why that is either. But uh, anyway, I just sent you a request, Alex. Maybe that will take care of the problem for now. Oh, okay. I, I, Plus, you might get somebody far worse. Like I, me. I hope so. Anyway, hey, listen, thank you, Rob. Very nice of you to be with us. Mike, Patrick, Tony, Renee, uh, Jeff, uh, Kevin, uh, Brian, and, uh, and and Tim, and then also uh, Diane. She was so nice to call, too. Been a good show. Been a great show. I've had a lot of fun with you people. Let's do it again next week. Thank you, everybody. Wave goodbye and say goodbye to everybody. Okay, there they go. That's the citizens panel, folks. And uh, I, this is Alex. And uh, that's about it for us. Um, we'll be here again uh, next week. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, it's Jack and Amy next over most of this same gabnet. And, uh, uh, and as always, and I, I, I say this with the ultimate humble quality if you see her tell her i love her okay bye